Hey guys, Eric here out at the Don Law Golf Academy at the beautiful Osprey Point Golf Club in Boca Raton, Florida. Now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the two major keys to stop hitting behind the ball and hitting the ball more solid. And we're actually gonna be doing a, a member spotlight, one of our members at cagornogolf.com. Chris, you'll see his swing in just a minute. Before we dive into that, I wanna let you know we are gonna be doing some in-person coaching here at Osprey Point if you'd like to come work with me. Of course, I would love to work with you. We'll put a link in the description to Acuity Scheduling for that. If you can't make it in person, would love to work with you through cagornogolf.com. That's where you can send me your swing. I'll build you a personalized practice plan to follow. You get access to all of our practice plans, all of the master classes, our awesome group of uh, community of golfers like you and me. Really everything you need to take your game to the next level, regardless of your current ability, I would love to work with you. And you actually there at Cagorno Golf will get something very similar to what you'll see in today's video. So uh, Chris, we're gonna start with Chris. Now in Chris, you'll see with the swings, this is sort of phase two of our development. Now when Chris and I started, he was shooting between 100 to 120, having some contact issues, the ball curving too far um, to the right, really a slice pattern being the main objective. And as you'll see in some of the videos, we've already got a practice station in. Um, and in a previous session, we worked on the gripping stronger to make the club face more square and really start to work the swing direction more from inside. And Chris has done an awesome job with that from the feedback from before. But now what we're starting to focus on is, okay, got the club face going good. The ball's flying pretty straight. We're not curving it to the right anymore, but we're still having some contact issues. In particular, the title of this video, too many fat shots. And so in this update, we wanted to identify two things that Chris can do to help fix the fat shots. And these are really two things that I would pay attention to if you have or struggle with fat shots in your game. And that's really the goal of these videos is to show you me working with a real person on their issues. And if you have those same things, you can take one or two of those pieces, implement in your own game and help fix. So in Chris's feedback, you see we got the grip better. We got the club face better, the swing direction underneath the stick. Um, is working better. But you'll see from there, when we take Chris to the top of his swing and we start down, we have very little to no weight, body, mass, etc., moving forward towards the target. And in with not having any weight move forward, we start to see the wrists unhinge early. Now, if I've got my ball here, right, we've got this yellow line, let's bring this up towards the ball. And let's say we understand that for me to hit this solid, I've got an iron that's on the ground. I need to be able to strike the ball um, first with the club, have the club work through the golf ball, and take turf out of the ground like I did beautifully in my warm-ups here, past the line. Right? So that's actually a really good unintended indicator. Hopefully we can see that okay. Here's the line that my golf balls were sitting on, and here were all of my divots past the ball. Don't worry about these up here, but these were all right past the ball. And that's what we want for solidness of contact. Now the question is, if I'm hitting it fat or hitting behind the ball, where do I need to look? What do I need to do? And I'm telling you, there's two main components to start with. And that is the more forward I get my weight and pressure. So think about my feet on a scale. The more pressure I get forward, the more of my lower body that I get forward, some of my upper body, and the amount that I hinge my wrists are two big factors. Let's start with the weight component first. Um, and so let's kind of look at the pressure in the feet. So we see with Chris, when he goes up to the top of the swing, that he gets up here to the top. He's pretty good at setup, right? Let's say we're starting 50-50. When he goes up to the top, he's still 50-50. But from this top position on the way down, there should be a shift into the lead side. How much? Probably 70-80% to the left or towards the target sooner. Now you can see relative to my setup, if I push more weight forward, that that's gonna increase or decrease the odds of me being able to strike the ground up here. I would increase it, right? If I go back to my setup 50-50 and put more weight to the right, would that increase or decrease the odds of me being able to hit the ground in front of the ball? This would decrease it. So what we wanna to start to feel is when we go back, we're gonna to start to push more pressure into our lead foot. And this is the first thing that uh, Chris and I talked about in the feedback video, was when you start to work back, we're gonna start to push pressure in your left foot, feeling like 80% of your weight's getting underneath there. We're gonna feel the left knee pushing down and forward to where the knee here is gonna get forward of my ankle. So my knee gets more towards the target than my ankle. My lead hip is gonna feel like it pushes forward over my ankle. 
right? And again, this is Chris keeping in mind, right? We're working with a slice pattern and we want to be able to swing the club from inside. I'm not overly concerned with the turn part yet. I want to get the pressure forward to shift low point forward. So pressure forward, knee forward, etc. And really the main visual that I like for the weight part here is if I put the stick in between my legs, I take my setup position, I put it right in the middle of my feet, and let's use this as an indicator where my belt buckle is. Okay, so where my belt buckle is. So if my belt buckle is right in the middle, 50-50, when I make my backswing, my belt buckle stays pretty much in the middle. It goes a little right because I turn, but it's pretty much in the middle. I want to get my belt buckle forward of that stick on the ground as soon as possible. And I really actually, for Chris, want to exaggerate a little bit. So I'd like to not only get the belt buckle forward of the stick, I'd like to get the, feel like the belt buckle is going to get over my lead ankle. Now, of course from there, that's going to create a little bit too much slide if you had a normal amount. But coming from where Chris is at currently, which is very little, he needs to feel like that belt buckle gets all the way over his lead ankle. Look how much forward that is. So that when he feels that much and makes a real swing, as we hopefully know by now, that'll be a middle ground. You gotta exaggerate the opposite of an issue to find middle. So the first 10 reps for Chris, before we look at the wrists, are gonna be just the hips. So I wanted him to feel one or two rehearsals, get the belt buckle forward, pressure into the foot, knee down and forward, belt buckle towards my left ankle, and then I can push my hips up and forward. Same thing, belt buckle is gonna push forward. One, two, and then I want him to start to hit with just that feel. And of course, we're gonna record from face on, Keep the stick in and give yourself a visual of that belt buckle pushing forward of that into the follow through. And that's gonna be piece number one for us to start to hit the ground, right? So we've talked in a million videos about getting the, maybe like 10, about getting the hips forward over the ankle. But if you don't do it enough early, that's a really good visual to start with. Now that's the hip part. Let's talk next about the wrist component. Okay, so the second component is the wrist angles, or are the wrist angles. Um, English, not my best deal here. So when I work down during the downswing, and I kind of, th I'm thinking about hinge here, the uh, angle between the club and my arm, right? So let's call this a 90 degree angle. The wider the angle, or the more unhinged or thumbs down I am, the more the club lengthens and is gonna hit the ground sooner. The more narrow the angle, the more thumbs up or the more hinge, that club would be much higher. Therefore, as I'm swinging, that would hit the ground much later. Thumbs down, unhinged fat, thumbs up, hinge good, right? That's kind of what we're looking for for Chris. So the general feel for this, we're gonna uh, add a drill in. So he's to do 10 reps with the weight forward component first, just to get that first. I'll still unhinge a little, that's okay. The weight to me was priority number one. Now we're gonna add in the hinge component. You may have seen um, one of, I think we did our favorite shaft lean video where we included this drill, where we're gonna put the stick on the side of the club, the majority of it over the end here, and we're gonna make some swings where we go just to about hip high just to feel this. Now, as I'm pushing my belt buckle forward of the stick on the ground, this is gonna give me an indicator of hinge. If I unhinge, the stick points towards the sky, hits my body. If I hinge, it points down towards the ground. So what I want Chris to feel is as he's pushing his hips forward, he's gonna get the stick to point down towards the ground. Push his hips forward, stick down towards the ground. So he's actually adding hinge, okay? Shifting too much on purpose. Adding too much on purpose. Why would he do that? because you have to over-exaggerate any issue you have. So as he's pushing forward, the stick is down towards the ground. Now from here, of course, he can extend his leg, push his hip, hips up, and let it throw, right? But that's really not our, our main deal. So what I want him to do here is do a couple, just to feel that takeaway, hips forward, stick down. Of course, I'm feeling the pressure in my feet to my left foot, 80-20. Feel my left knee work forward. I'm feeling my belt buckle forward of the stick while I get the stick down. Now when that feels easy with a takeaway, I might go back to left arm parallel. Same thing. Same thing. Now I like two rehearsals, one hit here. So I take the stick, I put that out, I come back here, just want to rehearse the same feels. And as I'm doing that, the feels we gave to Chris were to feel his thumbs working more up towards the sky and back behind him, like a 45 degree angle. I'll talk about that more in a minute. So he's here, add hinge, hips forward. Adding hinge, 
hips forward to stop the fat shots. And that's about as solid as I can do that. So now for Chris, you notice he's got the stick in, right? He's got that plane station because we were working on his path. So when I do the, the, the thumbs up part, what I really told him to make sure is that he still gets the club over four o'clock. So 12, one, two, three o'clock would be my toe line. But now I'm gonna put that in over four o'clock here. And what I want him to feel, because I don't want him to hinge it over the top, right? This would be thumbs up over the top. I don't want that. I want thumbs up club inside. Thumbs up towards the sky, club inside. So when I'm feeling my thumbs up, pushing my belt buckle forward to the stick, the thumbs feel up, but they're pointed over that four o'clock stick. The shaft is up over four with the club head high. Thumbs up, belt buckle forward. And again, we do one or two rehearsals with that and then hit with the same feels and confirm with video. And all of those pieces and really those two components that we're gonna work in are all to hit the ground in front of the ball. And if you struggle with fat shots, those would be two key pieces that I would look at. Of course, when you struggle with that, you have to check the beginning pieces. So you have to make sure, like at setup for instance, if you really struggle with fat shots, I said pressure in the feet and weight forward was a main thing to hit the ball more solid. So if you have too much pressure to the right or weight to the right, would that be good or bad for solid contact, Mary? That'd be bad, right? Now, if I'm good, but then I shift too much, still bad. So anytime I'm too far to the right, that would be an issue. Make sure you check that piece as well during the setup. Those are the two main components, weight forward, more hinge. That's how I put them together. That's what we did for Chris. If you'd like us to do something similar for you, I would love to build you a plan. Check out cogornogolf.com in the link down below.